The last Nissan Micra was criticised for its oddball styling, and that's why for this new version, Nissan have toned down the design somewhat. Now, it looks slightly smaller than some of its rival Super Minis, but don't worry about that because it is still quite practical. For instance, the boot is actually a decent size. And if you need more room, you can, of course, fold down the rear seats, quite simply by pulling these levers. Now, I know what you're thinking, is that lip could prove quite annoying, but don't worry, because by pulling these levers here, you can actually tumble the seats forward, which is a nice feature. Here in the back, there's enough space for adults. I'm just put these chairs back, and you'll see, yeah, look, down here, decent knee room, and headroom's pretty good too. There's plenty of practicality here in the front too. There's some cup holders there on the centre console, some in the side door bin, and as well as a glove box, you've got a little shelf there, and an extra cubby in the dash. And of course, being a Nissan, everything feels built to last. I also like the way the heater controls are neatly arranged in this single dial. As you'd imagine, the Micra is most at home in town. All the controls, they're nice and light, and there's great all-round visibility especially because the A-pillar is really thin, which means you don't get much of a blind spot when pulling out at junctions. At lower speeds, the suspension copes well with potholes and bumps in the road. But my favorite thing about this car is the fact that it's got the turning circle of a taxi, which makes it great for doing three-point turns or trying to squeeze into parking spaces. And I quite like just driving it round mini roundabouts. I mean, look at this. I don't think there's many cars <laughs> you could do this in. I think I better stop because I'm starting to annoy other drivers. Not everything is perfect though, is it? And when you get out on the open road, the higher speeds start to highlight some of the Micra's weaknesses. And I think the biggest one is that, quite frankly, it doesn't handle particularly well, especially not compared to something like a Mazda 2. There's lots of body roll when you go around corners and the steering, I mean, look at this. You can waggle it about and well, nothing really <laughs> seems to happen. As for the negatives, well, I have to say, the cabin is quite dull indeed. It's not as nice to be in as that in a Hyundai i20. And part of the reason for that is that the materials, they all feel cheap and, dare I say it, a bit nasty. Watch out for the base spec car as well because the equipment on it is quite mean. You don't get air conditioning, you don't get a split folding rear seat, and you don't get height adjustment on the driver's seat. And that brings me on to the actual seating position itself because it's quite hard to get comfy because you can't alter the steering wheel for reach. You can only change the rake. And then there's the sat nav. If you select that as an option, for some reason, Nissan don't give you a 12 volt socket to charge your phone and stuff off. And finally, there's the exterior styling because while it won't offend anybody, it's hardly going to excite anyone either. But you know, you might be willing to overlook all these shortcomings on account of the fact that the Micra is cheap to buy, it's cheap to run, and of course being a Nissan, it should be very reliable too. Thank <laughs> you.